All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today we're going to pick up a 2004 BMW 3 Series Touring that I bought for just £1,500. I love the E46 BMW. I know I've mentioned this many times before, but I think it's the real high watermark in the whole history of the 3 Series. Now, I've been away for a few days and I bought this car via email, so I haven't actually seen it yet, and it's been delivered in my absence. I bought this from a YouTube viewer. It actually belonged to his uncle, and it sounds, well, it sounds pretty mint. He said that the condition of this car and the way it's been looked after is right at my street, so I'm quite excited to see it. You might think that £1,500 sounds like quite a lot of money for a 2004 car. I mean, don't forget, it's 19 years old. But it's only done 50-odd thousand miles. I had a quick look on Autotrader, and there aren't many out there, especially low-mileage examples like this. So I'm hoping with a few jobs done and perhaps £500 spent, this should be worth three grand, three and a half grand. So the profit margin is there. Right then, let's go and have a look, shall we? See you there. Right, well, we're here. Looks pretty good. I know it's an old car now, but I think it still looks quite, quite sporty. It's got tiny wheels on it. I would say they're little 16s, I think. And it must be quite a basic model, this. It's either an SE or an ES. There are no Xenons, for example. And it's covered in what looks like tree sap and tree dirt. So it does need a good old clean. The plate's original, Rydale BMW. And it's from Birmingham originally, Birmingham plate. Right, as always then, we're gonna do a quick vehicle history check using Car Vertical. Now it's really easy to do. All you do is go to carvertical.com, type in the vehicle reg or the VIN. Now in this case it is Bravo Tango 54 Alpha Whiskey Golf check vehicle. This is currently checking millions of cars across dozens of countries' databases. It'll tell us if it's ever been stolen, written off, had a mileage rollback, or has outstanding finance on it. It'll also tell us a bit more about the car, and it's really important that you do one of these checks before you buy a used car. If you'd like 10% off, and why wouldn't you, either use my promo code HIGHPEAK or click the link below in the video description. Right, and the report is ready. So, 72 million damage records have been checked, 436 million vehicles have been checked in 35 countries. Right, so it is a 2004 318 petrol. Pity it's not one of the six cylinder engines, to be honest. But on the bright side, it's never been stolen, the mileage has never been tampered with, there's no outstanding finance, and it's never been involved in a recorded accident. So here we go the BMW 3 Series is a popular compact executive car that's been in production since 1975. This late 2004, by the way, is one of the final model years of the E46. Right, the last known mileage at the last MOT was 53,445. But it's fairly consistent every single year, so this guy's uncle had only done 3,000 miles a year in it. This is exactly the sort of stuff that I love to buy. MOT then, right. So its last MOT was done in November last year, and it had no advisor items. That's always good. It is a 318 Touring ES, and it's manual, and its model market was Europe. Right, well I think that's about it. So the ownership changed in 2005, it's had a private plate at some point. Well that's all pretty good then, isn't it? Right, let's go and have a look around it then. Okay then. Well the first good thing is that we've got all three keys. We've got both original remote keys, plus the little plastic valet key. Which is nice to see. So. What can I tell you then? Looks quite tidy on the body. It's covered in this horrible, like tree sap stuff though. I have to get that cleaned. Uh, the tire is a Dunlop and oh, it looks very old actually. Look at the, the crack in there on the wall. All right, that's gonna need replacing. These also rust terribly, but that looks all right actually. Not too bad at all. Yeah, I don't know whether you can see this on the camera, but it is in desperate need of a good old clean. Uh, front tire, we've got another Dunlop. Again, it's cracking on the sidewall. This is gonna need a set of tires. This is the downside with, with low mileage cars because they, they haven't done an awful lot of mileage. More cracks there, look. The tires just rot away. So this is, a, this is from uh, April 2015. So what's that? Eight years old, isn't it? Eight year old tires, right. We're gonna need a set of tires then. Up the front, uh, the body wheel looks okay. We've got little plastic covers there where the fog lights should be. If it was specced with fog lights, of course. 
Yeah, it's all quite clean. It's had, someone's done a little DIY repair here on this front corner. You can see here, it's probably to cover up a couple of little scuffs and they've just gone wild with the silver aerosol. That needs to go to the body shop then and put some thinners on that and take it back and see what damage is done underneath and perhaps paint it if it needs it. Uh, another Dunlop, again, cracked on the side wall. I suspect, hmm, yeah. Those tyres are eight years old and it's probably only done 10,000 miles on them, which is why the tread's good, but they're just old. Bodywork looks okay down this side though. That's all quite positive. And yeah, final matching Dunlop. So we're into a set of tyres. The brake discs, there's a little lip there actually, right at the front. Mm, little lip on that as well. It might be okay. Get my mechanic to check that out. Move around the back, we've got rear parking sensors. It all looks very, very honest and genuine this, so far. Yeah, quite good. Right, let's have a look inside then. Well, the first good sign is that that works. One of the common issues with the E46 is the remote locking or the central locking stops working. The other issue on this era of BMWs are the handles. It was a really poor design though, so you have to yank them up and it can quite often snap. So it is a low spec ES model. This is the base model. So I've got no buttons on the steering wheel. There's no multifunction steering wheel. I've got no electric seats, they're all manual. But yeah, not bad, quite clean really. A little rag there. Let's have a look under the hood. This is immaculate actually. This is very clean. We've got Two cigarette charger things there, 12 volt sockets. Manual windows on the old ES, but only in the back. I think they're electric up front. Got electric mirrors. Ah, look at this, I'd, I'd forgotten that these have that. That's the touring version, the estate version, has got a split folding tailgate. Quite a neat feature that, isn't it? Oh, you can lift the whole thing up. Those struts are probably on the way out. It's holding it up actually, okay, but they're a little. Hmm. Might replace those, they're only about 10 pounds each side. There's no spare. All quite complete though. Lock and wheel nuts in its little holder there. We've got the parcel shelf. There we go. Even got the little pull out dog guard as well. So far then, this does seem like a nice, genuine, honest car. I think I'll service it, MOT it, put a fresh set of tyres on it and give it a good old clean. I know I've popped the, uh, the bonnet, but let me just have a look at the service history then. So, BMW Shropshire, some receipts, service book, there we go. So it is a 318 ES. Let's see if this chap's full history is the same as my full history. So, PDI at 2004, then again at 14, 2007, BMW. Then 21,000 miles in 11. So, yeah, I hadn't done many miles, had it? Then again in 13 at 28, 31, 39, 43, 48. That was December 20 at 48, okay. It's only done 53, so I'll give it another service, bring that up to date. Well, the bonnet struts are good. Got a little J-cloth there. Quite a small engine this, I think it's a 2 litre, even though it's badged as a 1.8. With what horsepower will that be? 150 maybe? Something like that. that proper old fashioned dipstick, which isn't nice. Well, that's been wedged in there. Right, let's have a look at this then. That's nice and clean, actually. 
silver grey metallic. I think I've got some touch up paint for this on my, uh, on my desk. It's quite a common BMW colour. 2004. Well, it all looks nice and original under here. Nice and clean too. Yeah, it doesn't take up much space, that 1.8, oh, that 2-litre engine, should I say. The big six-cylinders always seem to sort of fill the bonnet bay. I think you've got to remember how old this car is. It's 19 years old now. And for a 19-year-old car, it is in pretty decent shape. We've got original mats. I've just spotted, I can just see with the sun beating down on it, the previous owner has painted all this trim. All of this has had a coat of gloss black. It doesn't look too bad actually, I don't, I don't hate it. I wonder what it was underneath. So we've got, that sometimes breaks, but it's not. Nice armrest. We've got a torch. No, the torch is missing. Try and find one on eBay. So the inspection is due in 11,000 miles, but I'll do one anyway. Let's fire up then. Sounds all right. Obviously being quite a low spec, it hasn't got the digital climate, it's just got traditional dials, but that doesn't bother me really. That air conditioning straight away feels nice and cool. Which I desperately need in our daylight today because it is 30, 30 degrees. Ah, never been smoked in. I've got a little DIY job here. Is that a uh, auxiliary jack? I'm not sure. I don't know what 106.4 is. I'm guessing that's some sort of local station to where the previous owner lived. No CDs left. But we've got the other, we've got the full book pack there, but we've got this other sort of book pack here. Yeah, with the original brochure, look at that. So the BMW 3 Series Touring, and it shows a nice 330 there. I love to see all this sort of stuff, I really geek out of this. So this car, brand new, oh, they did a 316. No, of course they did. I didn't know they did a 316 Touring though. Looking in the right place here or not? 318, that's an SE though. Where's, where's the ES? List price on the road was £22,900. That's on an SE. So it'll be there or thereabouts. Uh, with 143 horsepower, that was a good guess, wasn't it? Four cylinder 16 valve engine. All right. These wheels are standard then, aren't they? Star style alloys, 16 inch. All right. Still good for 34 miles per gallon though, 36 miles per gallon. Not bad. There they are. I oh, know it's not, they're not like that at all, are they? Well, I like to see all that sort of stuff. So, what have we got here? Ah, so the owner then bought it approved used. 318, they call it a saloon here. It's quite clearly not a saloon. Right, I won't bore you to death with any more of that sort of stuff, but I do like to see it. Right, should we take this for a drive then and see how it performs? Ah, it's not done 53, it's done 54,800 miles. 54. Still nothing, is it, for a 20 year old car? Right then, the old 318 Touring. Straight away, my clutch feels good. The steering wheel feels very nice, you can feel all the grain. Felt quite solid over the bumps. Just need to really clean this. Get rid of all that tree sap. Drives all right so far. We're in third gear. I love the E46, have I told you? I'd have loved this car had it had the big six cylinder engine, but the four cylinder, I suppose, they're all right. It never feels like pathetically slow. It doesn't ever feel wheezy. It's just the six cylinders are so much better. It's quite nice though, this. It feels like a nice low mileage car. The gearbox feels nice and slick. 
Yeah. I think, I think I'll do all right out of this. As long as it isn't completely condemned by my mechanic, but I can't see it being. I forgot about the window switches being there on an E46, and they're always quite flimsy. It's a nice car, this. If I knew somebody that was after a, a good, solid, reliable family car, then I could probably recommend something like this. Yeah, it's quite nice. I can't see, imagine these are famous last words, I can't see me spending a fortune on this. Tyres, I mean, they're not huge wheels, are they? So the tyres are probably going to be £80 each, I suppose. So there's 320 Service, MOT, there's five. A little bit of a smart repair on that front bumper. Try and mask over the, uh, the DIY job. We're probably into 600 quid. So this could owe me 2122 with a valet. I think it's three and a half grand, maybe 3295 maybe. Yeah, it's got to be worth that sort of money, hasn't it? Right, let me run this down to my mechanics then, and I shall see you in, give me a week, give me a week's time. And I should be able to spin this around. I'm looking forward to seeing it clean though, without all that tree sap. The interior is very, very clean though. Just notice it's got the anthracite headliner as well, which I think was an option. I would have obviously preferred a 330 automatic with heated leather seats and everything else, but this is all right. Just glancing over there at that passenger seat, it looks as though it's never been sat on. Right, I shall see you in a week. Cheers for watching. And we're back, and guess what? I've massively overspent. This isn't even funny anymore, is it? This really wasn't worth buying. I really thought this was a mint low mileage little thing that wouldn't need an awful lot doing to it, but not so much. Let me tell you what happened then. After we last spoke, I took it down to my mechanics for a standard service, MOT, and four new tyres. If you remember, the tyres looked okay, but they were very old, so I ordered four new Continental tyres. It wasn't that much extra to fit Continentals rather than cheap land sales, and I thought, you know what, on a low mileage BM estate like this, I should put proper tyres on. I think this probably would have left the factory with Continentals, so why not stick with them? My mechanic called me the next day to say, Matt, this 3 Series needs quite a bit of work. I was surprised, to be fair, because I thought this was a nice little thing, but, in fairness, that's the used car job for you. And after years of doing it, I'm just used to getting bad news. It's like water off a duck's back. I'm not saying that's a good thing, by the way, but it's how I am. My mechanic said that it needed front brake discs and pads because they were a bit ropey, fair enough, but it also needed brake pipes. They're all quite badly corroded, and you just never know when they're going to burst. If you were driving along and one of the brake pipes were to burst, then you'd be left with very minimal brakes, and I just can't take that risk. I've had that actually happen to me once years ago in an old Mondeo and it was quite terrifying so I can't do that to anybody else. So I've replaced all the brake pipes. My mechanic said that some of the pipes were placed awkwardly like above the fuel tank and stuff so it was quite a labour intensive job to replace them. Also one of the brake calipers was seized so it's had a new one of those as well. We're not done yet either, there's more. In addition to that it needed new front arm rear bushes because they were shot. And the wiper blades had also perished, so I've replaced them with some Bosch ones. So as you can imagine, there was quite a large bill. Then I took it to the paint shop for a little bit of paint. If you remember, there was a DIY job on that front corner. As I suspected, the damage was minimal. It actually looked a lot worse than it was. So I had that cleaned off, repaired and then repainted, and now it looks as good as new. Then I took it to the car wash for a mini valet. I didn't bother having a full £70 valet done on this because it wasn't that bad. Actually, well, the inside was actually quite clean. So instead, I spent £15 on a quick mini valet. Then I got it back to work and replaced the number plate screws because they were corroded. So I put some new screws on and some new caps. And it just looks a bit tidier. And that, I think, is it. It's all now ready for sale, ready for its new home. And I've currently got it advertised at 3495 which might sound good for a car that I only paid fifteen fifty for, but I don't think I've got much profit left in this, sadly. I'm hoping, though, that it will at least sell quickly so I can get my money back out of this and then reinvest it into something hopefully more profitable. I've already had about five inquiries on it without any photographs, so hopefully it shouldn't stick around too long. Right, what I'm going to do now, then, is park up somewhere scenic and I'll talk you through my bills. Bills, plural. Right, well, I think here we'll do... There we go. On the bright side, my air conditioning works. I think I shall keep that running because it's quite a warm day today. Okay then, so my bill at my mechanics was £1,456.31. £1, Almost the cost of the car again. So for that, it's had an oil filter, £8.50. Oil, £28. Near side rear brake flexi hose, £27.46. Four Continental tyres. 
I'd be interested to see how much they cost. They cost me £530 for all four, plus VAT. Not too bad, really, is it? Wiper blades, they cost me £24. Two front bottom arm rear bushes, £78. Front brake pads, £28. Front brake discs, £60. Near side rear brake pipe and ends, £25. Offside front brake caliper, £48. Labour, 315 MOT test fee. So my total there was 145631. In addition to that, then I've only got two other bills. £80 for the paint, which I thought was quite reasonable, and £15 for a mini valet. So my total is, this is ironic, isn't it? 155131. So 1550 basically. Now I paid 1550 for the car, if you remember. 1500 plus £50 for the guy to bring it up. So the car owes me £3,100. If I sell it for the asking price, which I think I will, given the amount of interest I've had in it already, then that will leave me with a profit of £395. Not really worth doing, was it? But, on the bright side, it's quite a nice car, isn't it? I was thinking about who might buy something like this. I think some sort of young family that don't want a cash guy. I'd much rather drive something like this. At least then you get something that's nice to drive, looks good, practical, but it doesn't cost the earth. So I think that's about it. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. And yeah, cheers guys. See you next time.